The days of working from home are fading for more employees. Corporations, businesses, mom and pop businesses nationwide are setting new return to work policies. Now, three years later, companies want workers to return to the buildings they vacated. You really think saving a little commuting time makes up for, for people that are, I don't know, there's just no way you can be as productive if, if you're at home. You need a boss, Kevin. You need a tough taskmaster. It does not work for younger people. It doesn't work for those who want to hustle. It doesn't work in terms of spontaneous idea generation. So how, how does it work like, for your culture? In terms it, of it, do, it doesn't work for culture. Is remote work dead? Every day it feels like I see a new clickbait headline saying remote work is dead. With the huge economic downturn, layoffs happening every week, and organizations calling their employees back to the office, it's hard to get to the truth. So I flew all the way to Lisbon, Portugal to MC the largest remote work conference in the world, Running Remote. And I asked CEOs and remote leaders to tell me what the fuck is going on. And what I found shocked me and changed what I thought about remote work forever. Most of the people I spoke to at this conference had been running remote teams for years before the pandemic. But once the pandemic hit, it forced remote work into mainstream adoption in an unprecedented way. Within just a couple of years, we proved at a global scale that companies, industries, and people could be remote that never thought they could be. Despite this global state of emergency, this could be considered the silver lining. People who never experienced remote work before were getting a taste of what they thought was their dream. But was this dream really all that it seemed? See, there was a big problem. Forced to work from home, global pandemic remote work isn't true remote work. People weren't ready to be cooped up in their apartments with their spouses, kids, and animals all day. They didn't have the space, the equipment, the mindset, or skills. See, the context for the average person doing remote work during that time became correlated with a global quarantine. Meaning, how could you actually enjoy remote work if it was forced upon you in this way? And companies weren't structured to facilitate communication or even legally enforce remote work policies. With no clear standardization of what remote work meant, we fell into chaos. Well, it's hard. I think we first have to kind of have a, a come to reality moment and accept the fact that chaos is going to happen with any new innovation in the world. Uh, and, and rather than try to you know, force something into the world, you have to take it one step at a time. Uh, you know, you go back to 1906, look at the rise of the automobile. I mean, it was absolute chaos. You had horses, trolleys, cars, people walking, everyone competing for what's going to be the best solution to get around. And 25 years of that, absolute chaos and, and solutions competing to be the dominant, cars emerge and change the whole world as we know it. Uh, I think we're going through that now. You've got a lot of different approaches of, of how to work, all of them competing at the same time, all, everyone trying to figure out what works for them. And out of that chaos will emerge order, as it always does. If you look at the Gartner hype cycle, right, we, we see that things have a initial big peak of hype, and then you come down as people start to realize, well, maybe this isn't so great. It's called the trough of dis disillusionment. And it is there where a lot of new innovations get stuck until they finally find a way to start making the solutions, they get everybody on board and add actual value. Looking back, it's crazy to think that companies that tried remote work for the first time during the pandemic were gonna have a good experience. Change is hard. Change is really, really hard. And when you, the bigger the organization gets, that change management is even more complicated. So I think it's a little bit ridiculous of us, those of us that are really entrenched in this world of remote work to expect that every single company that tried remote work was gonna have had a great experience. The pandemic was a weird phase in a lot of different ways. And we can't compare remote work during the pandemic when the entire world was forced to work remotely to what we should expect today. There's gonna to be a recalibration phase. So now the knee jerk reaction of many of these companies is to go back to the office because that's what they know. Yeah, but Amazon, in yeah. once, uh, when they announce the end of remote work, in 48 hours, 16,000 Amazon workers signed a petition basically threatening to quit if remote work you know, was, was canceled. But are companies enforcing these mandates asking the right questions? Recently, the CEO of ClearLink, James Clark, caught fire after his rant was made public to bring people back to the office. 
he noticed that 30 of his remote employees hadn't logged into their computers in a month. Yes, a month. His reaction was to mandate return to office for all employees who lived within 50 miles of HQ. During this call, he applauded one of them for selling their family dog just to be able to return back to the office. So, should you have to sell your dog to do good work? Or maybe it's not the where work is being done that facilitates success, but the how. It's not a remote thing, it's an it's a organizational behavior issue. It's kind of like when people come up with tools to fix a problem, but the tool isn't gonna fix a problem that you have internally if it's an organizational behavior problem. It's only gonna enhance or create efficiencies for what you already have. People think that remote is about where you or your team works, right? Um, and really what it is about is a whole different operating system. So it doesn't matter where you are working from, it's, how, it's a whole new system. It's a system with but a synchronous communication first. It's a system where you need documentation. It's a very human-centric way of managing and of working, actually, which is very surprising for much people. And you see this, all these remote companies actually having a stronger culture. So basically, we need to reinvent how we work. At what point is it the fault of leadership for setting poor expectations around output, communication, and standards for an organization? As I found myself asking these questions, I dug deeper. And what I found was something more sinister at play. There is millions and millions of dollars that were invested in real estate. Uh, many companies, even in Portugal, got new offices just before the pandemic. And now they have this, all these empty buildings. And there is so many, both in Portugal, US and elsewhere, that there is kind of this fear that all this investment was in vain. So I think there is some big people trying to push back pe people back to the office, not because it's better to work in the office, that's just an excuse, but because they need to justify the money spent on real estate. Cities, big hubs have been organized around office spaces. There is a lot of uh, companies, there is a lot of wealth creating around those spaces. Those have been heavily impacted by, by remote work. Uh, therefore, they're not accepting that, that truth. They want to go back to the old normal because that benefit, that's, 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 that's more interesting for themselves. Therefore, they tend to create a lot of uh, media, a lot of noise around remote work because it, it, it plays against their interest. So, if commercial real estate, governments, and executives of the largest companies in the world have financial stake in the failure of remote work, then will their interests be enough to squash the remote work movement completely? I, I have to say absolutely not. <laughs> um, there's some really interesting s statistics out there, and I know there's a lot of fun headlines, like there, there's a lot of uh, money being pumped into selling a narrative that remote work is dead, return to office mandates, things like that. Um, the fact is, like, we're up 6x over where we were pre-pandemic in terms of number of days being worked remotely. And, um, and so it's really hard to say that remote work's dead. I think what we have to do is we have to recalibrate where we are in terms of what are our expectations around remote work. The pandemic was a weird phase in a lot of different ways. And we can't compare remote work during the pandemic when the entire world was forced to work remotely to what we should expect today. There's gonna to be a recalibration phase. So the rule was, if you want to achieve ultimate mentorship, if you want to achieve a career success, you had to be in the office. And I think that although that perspective is very prevalent, it is definitely not going to survive because at the end of the day, people want work-life balance, people want to be able to achieve their work output while exercising autonomy and creativity. And the only way to achieve that is working remotely. The future is not blanket anything. You know, the future is not remote, the future is not hybrid, the future is not, like, it's going to be at the individual level, it's going to be at the team level, it's going to be at the company level, it's going to be whatever works for the people trying to get work done. Well, I've been working remotely for 12 years now, and I started back in 2010 working for a $7 billion company, and so that was when remote work was still kind of building. I would say remote work is bigger than ever right now, other than the pandemic period. So the pandemic period was a little bit of a, of a outlier. And so we have a lot more remote work now than we ever did before the pandemic. And I think that that's gonna continue to grow. Well, before the pandemic, some of the companies that adopted remote work by default had to hide the fact that they, they were working remotely because it was not accepted, uh, particularly in the corporate sector. With the pandemic, uh, some of those walls, some of those barriers fell. A lot of the corporate leaders were saying that remote work doesn't work, and they were forced to work remotely, and the company survived. Therefore, their argument against remote work was gone. 
now we're seeing an adjustment also uh, um, because of the tech sector is, is suffering uh, some financial uh, issues uh, where and also because uh, it was an abnormal situation with the pandemic um, but it's definitely going to go up. It's simultaneously okay to accept that the office isn't dead either. We still need to meet in person. Maybe we just need to reimagine everything and build the new solutions that are gonna drive innovation. I think that remote work is the future. I don't think the office is dead. I think the way we use offices today is dead. And I think we have to reinvent the use we give to offices. And in my opinion, the office shouldn't be a place to work only. It should be a place to meet people. In my opinion, remote work is a roller coaster, but it's a unique roller coaster because it's only going up. It has up and downs, but it's only going up. And in my opinion, once these economic crises that particularly the tech sector is suffering, which is just cycles, it's just going to boom again. It would force us to adopt flexible work rather than deny the inevitable future that's coming. Then we can start asking better questions about work, like instead of where it's being done, how it's being done. So I'll end here with this question. Is remote work dead? What do you think? Drop a comment below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. And until next time, keep wandering. You're not lost. How tall are you? 6'8". OK, so this is just for everybody. He's 6'8", OK? So I'm not that short, OK? <laughs> so my name is... I, would... oh. I think it's going to look weird if we're both grouping it. OK, so you're going to group it. Now. I'm just going to hold it. Yeah, yeah, yeah because it's fully remote and she can work from anywhere. She's actually, she has a disease. She has to go to the hospital many times. We don't care. She has the freedom to work when she wants. Hold on, I gotta think about what, what I'm gonna say. <laughs> really good question. Um, that's why I have the mic. <laughs> that's why they pay you the big bucks. You know what they say, right? If you're sitting with one leg in, in, you know, in the oven and the other one in the freezer, you're on average fine, right? <laughs> or take your legs out of the oven in the freezer. Like that's a, that's a good way to... Exactly. No leg ovens. We got that for the bloopers. Earlier. Got that one for the bloopers. I didn't mean to make that face. I had to sneeze, and somehow I like somehow I reversed it. It was like I wanted to get I wanted to get through the, the full answer. That's that's hard. Oh, that was tough. Yeah, I looked down. Don't look up. Yeah. Looking up is will make you sneeze. I, Everybody I knows that. Needed to sneeze so hard, and someone was coming in for a hug, and I'm like. <laughs> You hold it? I held it. Okay. And then as soon as they let go, I was like, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> they like, turned it into a dab, too. Like, <laughs> I was just dabbing. <laughs> That's over. That, that trend is no longer, so. Whoa. Did you get the birds? So if your team is already dysfunctional. Oh, my god. <laughs> so if your team is already dysfunctional. <laughs> like this interview. What do you feel about pigeons? Or doves. Are they pigeons or doves? They're pigeons, and I just don't want them to shit on my hair. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, they're actually both pigeons and doves are the same thing. I didn't know that. That was really good. Yeah, yeah you like turned it on. Ooh! <laughs> hey! <laughs>